Yo, what is going on guys? Johnny GB here with the Token Minorities bringing you guys another Pokemon TCGO tournament deck profile. We're going to be reviewing the third place deck over at the Harrogate Regionals. Second to last deck from Harrogate we will be reviewing. Then come February we will be bringing you guys decks from the Dallas Regionals and whichever one is over in Europe. I know they do two regionals together. Dallas will be an expanded regional and the European one will be a standard regional. So Today we're going to be reviewing the Zoroark Ninetales GX deck that finished third place, used by Jack Cucklin, Culkin, and it's actually an interesting deck. It's not a full Zoroark Decidueye Ninetales. This is more of a Zoroark Lycanroc control deck uh, with Weavile. So, looking at it, I've yet to test it. I see the concept the deck is trying to work with, uh, but. Again, I have yet to implement it, see what the deck is actually trying to do. Zoroark and Weavile will be your guys' main attackers in this deck. Uh, if you guys want to, I have the Limitless TCG link down below if you guys want to use this deck for yourself. So, we've a uh, lot of stage 1 Pokemon, which makes Ditto Prism Star an almost mandatory usage in this deck. You have Alolan Muk, Lycanroc, Ninetales, and Zoroark along with Weavile. So, a lot of stage 1 Pokemon that you can evolve into from Ditto Prism Star. The interesting one is Weavile. So Weavile is in the deck because Evil Admonition, Admonition, 50 damage to each Pokemon that has an ability on your opponent's side of the field. So Tapu Lele, opposing Lycanroc, opposing Zoroark, opposing Alolan Mux, Ditto Prism Stars, um, off the top of my head, Magikarps, uh, we're seeing a little bit of play now due to the first place deck being Gyarados, so a lot of Pokemon with abilities in the meta right now. So Evil Admonition does a very good job of dealing 50 damage. Why is that 50 damage, potentially 80 damage to an active Pokemon important? Well, we play Devoured Field, so now that damage becomes 60 damage. Um, and when you look at 60 damage, or an additional 10 onto Zoroark GX, say you're playing a Choice Band, onto your Zoroark GX, you're dealing 150 damage now with Zoroark GX with the Choice Band, plus the 50 from the Weavile, that's only 200 damage, but if you do play a Ravaged Field, you, or Devoured Field, Devoured Field, you can now do 210 total damage, which does knock out opposing Zoroarks. Yes, your opponent's Zoroarks will be able to get that extra 10 damage, but with the Weavile in play, you will be able to be doing that 150 or 160 damage plus the 50 which does get the knockout now other things that do help with the deck are unit energy and there was one more counter gain so counter gain and unit energy are very nice for either zoroark which allows you to use righteous beating for one unit energy or it can allow you to use lycanroc gx claw slash for 110 for a unit energy or two unit energy mainly because of the unit uh, the counter gains ability to cross off one colorless energy two energy will now allow you to use dangerous rogue or claw slash to knock out opposing zoroarks uh, along with any electric types not many electric types seeing play stuff like zero aura potentially or in the future zekrom pikachu tag team gx uh, but the unit energy is just a very nice card to have uh, for Weavile, Zoroark, or uh, Lycanroc. Now, as far as Alolan Muk goes, Alolan Muk saw a lot of play at the Harrogate Regionals for the Power of Alchemy Ability Lock. And it locks down the abilities of basic Pokemon that your opponent may play down onto their bench or in their hands. So their Tapu Lele's Ditto Prism Stars that see a lot of play will no longer have their abilities. And you can stop potential Lele to Guzma, Lele to Cynthia and really disrupt your opponent. Now, as far as the trainer supporters go, nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, any Zoroark deck usually ends up running form for Elm's Lecture to fill up the bench. Uh, as far as Ninetales go, your items that you're searching out are this top, this middle row right here, enhanced hammers, multi-switch, pal pads, uh, switches, or your timer and ultra balls. Or potentially your counter gain or choice band. So you're not searching out stuff like rare candies like nor uh, normal Ninetales decks would do. So it's a very interesting concept for the deck. I've yet to test it. I'm very excited to test it because I do like the Ninetales. I think Ninetales is a very good card. And I've used it with Decidueye very often. 
So we are taking on a colorless grass fire deck. Interesting. Not sure what there is with fire and colorless. Uh, we do want the we do win the coin flip, so you do want to go first with this deck. You want to get your bench set up and going. Uh, as we do brick, but we do end up with an Elms Lecture, unfortunately. Alright, so unfortunately we do brick. I'm not really sure what he's playing with grass and fire. Uh, we do get a Zorua. We do get a... Ultra Ball. Uh, I mean, opening up the Zerua is nice. I do need to see something off of a draw. Uh, as my opponent did draw a starting Pokemon, I guess. As he is playing Execute. Well, I do play Pal Pad. I'll get rid of the Rescue Stretcher and the Acerola, and we are going to grab ourselves one of our Lele's so that I can get myself a Professor Elms Lecture. So I do have one Elms Lecture prized. But it does allow me to start getting Zoroark onto my bench, so we can get a Zorua, a Weavile, and a probably Rockruff or a Lolan Vulpix. This is the decision making here. I'm not really sure. We're playing a grass deck, so I probably don't want. Um, Lycan Rock out. And you know what? Because he's playing probably a Lolan Executor, I don't think. Um, I don't think. Uh, what is it called? Alolan, uh, I mean, Weavile is actually of much use unless my opponent plays Lele. Oh, he plays Shuckle. So my opponent is playing Shuckle, which will allow me to use Weavile more effectively. So he'll probably get a bunch more Alolan Execute, or not Alolan Execute. Uh, you're just going to get a bunch more Execute. So we are playing just an Alolan Executor deck, which I do not like. Because when Alolan Executor gets going, it starts hitting big numbers very, very quickly. And I don't like that. There's a Ranguru. Alright, I don't like this. Your choice ban is not going to help me here whatsoever. I guess we could play a unit energy. Um, I'm going to save the counter gain. I don't want to play it right away. And oh, this is not helping me. I'm going to play the Choice Band down just so that <sighs> this is just tough. I'm in a bad spot here because I have Cynthia, which is great because I can search out Zor Zora arcs. Ah, this is actually frustrating. So he's going to search out Netball and Ultra Ball. He's going to get his uh, Alolan Executor out. Netball is going to search out the energy. This is my problem against Alolan Executor is when I try to play it, I cannot get going. When I do try to play it, or when I don't try to play it and I play against it, my opponents will start just going off. That's pretty much as simple as it's going to get. They're just going to start getting their energies into the discard pile, they get their bench full, they get their Alolan Executors, 
And right here, my opponent's going to pick up a knockout. Very easy knockout on me. And now I cannot hit that 160 number. Or 150 number because I don't play choice ban. Or choice ban does not actually affect it. Ugh. This is not what I want to see. What I want to see here is a couple bench Pokemon. So there's a Zerua. We're going to play... We're going to play Timer Ball. Can I get a heads? No. Alright, well, we're going to play our Lola Ninetales, and we're going to search out probably... Timer and Ultra Ball. Uh, timer Ball in case I do not get the heads. Alright, so I do get one head, so that does give me a Zoroark. Which I like. Again, my opponent cannot knock me out here. I can trade... I know he's not going to play any type of special energy, so Enhanced Hammer is not going to be of any use. And I do get a second Zoroark, which I like. Uh, we're going to Righteous Beating for 100 damage, so we will be able to pick up a Knockout next turn. Uh, my opponent, on the other hand, has 4 energy in the discard pile, so he's only doing 100 damage total. As he gets another Lolan Executor show uh, set up, he's going to Elm's Lecture, probably search out another Shuckle, which will allow him to send more energy into the discard pile. This is where I would like my Judge. This is where I would like my Judge back. Or one of my Acerolas. Uh, so right here, we're going to get our second Zoroark into play, which is great. We'll attach an energy so it's set up. We are going to trade away the Elm's Lecture. I don't really need to use my supporter on that to get one Pokemon. Uh, we do get the Ditto Prism Star, which is nice. And I'm just going to Cynthia here. I want a fresh hand of six, see what I can do next turn. We do get the Devour Field, so we do save ourselves from Shrine of Punishment. And we do get a nice boost to my Zoroarks. And I'm going to play Switch so I can have a Zoroark fully, uh, not fully healthy. Uh, just not being able to be knocked out next turn. 130 damage is okay. Not great, but it's oh, it's okay damage. And we do get a Mallow off the top deck. Mallow could help me get like a Lolan Muck into my hand. Although Lolan Muck isn't going to help me right here with him about to play a second Shuckle down. Uh, I, could, I would like Guzma. Start damaging that Alolan Executor on the bench because I will need two hits to knock it out with Zoroark. And has he used a Rescue Stretcher yet? He's used one. I don't know if he's playing any, anything more than one. Well, hello. We got our Lycanroc GX, which we will evolve to bring in the Alolan Executor into the active. Um, I will play a counter gain onto my Lycanroc GX with an energy. And we're going to Mallow. We're going to Mallow because I want Palpad. Probably Palpad and Cynthia. And kind of just set myself up for next turn. Is really what I'm looking for. Uh, get Guzma out. Or use my Cynthia, right? What do we have in here? Probably Cynthia and a Guzma. Get those back in. Or Cynthia and an Acerola. Probably the Cynthia and Acerola. I have two Guzma in the deck. Cynthia and Acerola could actually help me here later in the game. Uh, we are just going to Righteous Beating for the 130 damage. Uh, this Zora can now take two hits. Uh, and then if I can get into something like Acerola, I actually put myself into a very good position here for the rest of the game. Uh, he's just going to attach a Psychic Energy onto his Execute. Uh, which is probably a choke because he needs a grass energy. He's already used his energy attachment for the turn. Used his supporter for the turn. So the only thing saving him is switch. And my opponent's actually just going to forfeit. Which I will take because I hate playing Alolan Executor. So 1-0 with the deck. And really my goal was trying to set myself up for there for the late game. Save my Guzmas to knock out the Executors. And now, hopefully, I can actually get something that's somewhat meta-relevant. So I can give you guys a better showcasing and hopefully a full game showcasing.
All right, so Tails never fails, and hopefully it does not fail us right now. Oh, it did fail us. It failed us. As uh, So did our hand, but my opponent did brick as well, so we're just exchanging hands again. As we open up Tapu Lele. That hurts. My opponent going max rarity, shrine of punishment, apricorn maker, water energy. Are we playing another Alolan Executor deck? Oh, I think that fire type in the Alolan Executor deck might have been my cargo. Starting to think about it off the top of my head. I think that might have been my cargo. All right. So we are playing Empoleon. Interesting. All right, I have not, it's been a, a full year since I've actually seen an Empoleon deck. All right, so my opponent's going to Cynthia. That is kind of cool. Uh, wow. Because the pre-release for Ultra Prism was exactly one year ago today. Well, not today, but exactly a year ago. My opponent's going to Ultra Ball. He's going to search out a couple. He did use a Cynthia, so I know my opponent will have a very small hand. Probably playing Oranguru. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Chikorita. So we're playing against uh, Empoleon Meganium. Alright, so. Right off the bat, we can get rid of one Devourer Field and a Choice Band. Choice Band, because my opponent's not playing any EXs, uh, does not help me. We can grab ourselves a second Lele, which can allow us to search out a Professor Elm's Lecture. Which means I can fill the deck, uh, the bench up with some Zerua. And because nothing is playing an ability, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, in getting something like um, Weavile out. And it looks like my Sneasel is prized, so really not a concern for me at all. Looking at my hand next turn, we have a nice full bench. I do not want to play my Devoured Field yet in case he does have something like a um, Brooklet Hill to search out another Piplup. Looking like all my opponent can do is probably just pack. I want to get rid of all the Empoleon with energy. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I wanted to get rid of all the Piplup with energy because two energy can be doing a lot of damage to me. Especially with me filling up my bench. So there is the Meganium. We are going to get ourselves an Alolan Ninetales out. We're going to search for two item cards. We're going to search out Timer Ball and Switch. So the main reason I want Switch is in case I do hit a Heads. Oh my god. Alright. Wow. Come on. Come on, Zorark. God, really? I am bricking on everything I need. So we're playing a heavy stage two evolution deck. Empoleon, uh, Swampert, Meganium. Does he have a rare candy in hand? He's gonna Lily for four cards. Ah, oh, this is frustrating. This is frustrating. I need a Zorark off of that, because now my opponent can just search out something like a Bayleaf and a Marsh Tomp. Surprised he's not playing a Lola Ninetales GX. Up oh, there's the Prim Plup and the Empoleon. All right. Um, I'm gonna judge because he added those two cards into this hand. I am gonna judge that will get rid of the Empoleon and the oh, that is a perfect that is exactly what I want. So I get the Zoroark out, I have a Lily for next turn. I also disrupt his hand, making sure he doesn't get the Empoleon. We are gonna trade away one Alolan Ninetales. I don't see another one helping me the rest of the game, which lets me get two cards Mallow and Enhanced Hammer. Uh, he probably does not play any type of special energy.
and we do get rid of the Alolan Vulpix. Alright, so... There's the Empoleon, there's the Meganium. Now, does he have... Oh, that was his turn. Okay. So, we got another Pokemon there on the bench. Catch. I'm gonna Lily. The main reason I'm gonna Lily is so I have cards in hand that I can mess around with. Um... He's not playing anything with an ability that's a basic, so I can get rid of Alolan Muck, not seeing the use of it. Um, there's some energy there, not really helping me. I guess we Righteous Beating pick up a knockout here. And hopefully find something, a Zoroark. That's actually nice. Zoroark helps me. He will probably just rare candy into Empoleon and deal a load of damage to my Zoroark. Oh, he just gets some Meganium. Before you attack, you may choose use this ability. Choose one of your basic Pokemon and play. Okay, so that Meganium pretty much is just a rare candy. So he's just going to total command here. 20 for each bench Pokemon. So 20, 40, 60, 80... And 100, 180 damage. We'll pick up a... Not a knockout, but do a lot of damage. And this is where my Acerolas are going to come into play. Uh, because he does need choice bands to pick up knockouts on me. Um, the Acerolas now will be... Very useful for me. As I can just sit here and recycle... Zoroarchs, pretty much. So I do want to trade away Lycanroc GX. Uh, I don't have Ditto Prism Star out. I have Acerola and another Zoroark. That is exactly what I want. So I can be picking up a knockout on the Empoleon next turn with my with one of my Zoroarchs. Have I played Palpat already? I have not. So my opponent will Cynthia, so I do not have to worry about an Acerola or a Guzma this turn. Now, he can use Meganium's ability. He's going to get himself a second Empoleon set up. Good to go. As for myself, I have a good option. So, he's just going to go for the 90 damage. Discard an energy. I do not like that. Because I have no real way to get <laughs> bring energy back. Uh, but we will Acerola here. We're going to get rid of my Zoroark from the active. We're going to play another Zoroark. And again, we're just recycling as we will trade away an Ultra Ball and hopefully hit a Pal Pad. Nope, did not hit the Pal Pad. As we're, we're just going to try until I get the Pal Pad because I do want those Acerola back in my deck. Did not get them. Unfortunate. Well, we will Righteous Beating, which will knock out the Empoleon. Three energy gone. And we are taking a very nice lead. And there's the Pal Pad, exactly what I want to get the Acerola back into the deck. Once I get the Acerola back into the deck, we are good to go. So he's going to get another Empoleon out, probably attach and uh, do 160 damage, potentially. Because how many water energy are in his discard? Five. He's going to netball, he's playing Primarina? I'm kind of curious on what the bench is being played as. Uh, Devoured Field. I think that was my last Devoured Field. Yes, it was, unfortunately. So, Stuff will be starting to take some damage here. As he does get Primarina. And now he's going to be doing 200 damage with... Uh, kind of curious why that did 200. Oh, full bench. Eh, full bench, duh. Alright, so now then. With Shrine of Punishment, I'm in a little bit of trouble here. 
right? Well, I can't pick up another knockout on this Empoleon, so we're gonna shuffle three Pokemon, right? No, we're just gonna add a Pokemon for my discard pile in my hand. We're gonna pick up our Zerua, because I have another Zoroark in hand. Uh, we're gonna attach another unit energy onto Zoroark. We're gonna Palpad, get both Acerola back into my deck. And with this, we are going to Trickster GX, which lets us use Total Command to knock out his Empoleon. So, finally was able to actually use that Zoroark GX attack. Full bench. Uh, here's the Piplup. Um, I believe uh, Primarina's ability was only if you... Oh, he can still attach, but still, that's 7 energy in his discard, right? He probably only plays a max of 10 energy, I would believe. Especially with such a heavy line of Pokemon. He would only play 10 energy. And for me, I have a Guzma, so I can... Ooh, there's the Empoleon. Hmm. He's gonna Apricorn Maker, search out two ball cards, add them to his hand, probably Ultra Ball and a Nest Ball. And he's gonna use one of the Ultra Balls to search out probably a Swampert. Yep, so only once per turn can he use Quicken, uh, the Rappening, and he's going to use it to search out the Swampert. He's gonna power draw, discard one, draw three. And now I'm in a position to where I should start picking on the Piplup. I could knock out the Piplup here and set myself up for next turn. So we're going to get another Zoroark into play. We're going to play a unit energy onto one of my Zoroark. And I'm just going to knock out the Piplup. I don't want him setting up an Empoleon at all. And I have Acerolas and a double colorless energy. So Swampert here cannot knock me out, I believe. He needs three energy to knock me out, right? Does 80 plus 20, 60, 140 plus um, 40 is only 180. So he does not have enough to actually knock me out with uh, his Swamper. He does not have anything off the Nest Ball. That sucks. I needed him to play another basic. If you were to play another basic onto his bench, I would have just guzma next turn for the game. Uh, so he's going to power draw. A little unfortunate. I was really hoping he would play down a basic Pokemon. was really hoping that. So there's the rescue stretcher. So maybe I have potential to pick up a knockout here. He's not playing Aqua Patch, which I find interesting. So he's going to shuffle three Pokemon back into his deck. Piplups and an Empoleon. Does he have another Nest Ball? Oh, he has Super Boost Energy. Oh! 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 That is actually kind of nice. So my opponent playing the Super Boost Energy counts as four Water Energy, which I that was that was a good move on my opponent's part. So we're going to play our Zerua down onto the bench. We are going to Enhanced Hammer, gets rid of that Super Boost Energy. And we are going to Guzma in... What's... They're all pretty much same retreat cost. We're going to attach Double Colorless Energy. We are going to Righteous Beating. Um, my opponent does try to do anything as... See, my opponent probably does not have enough water energy to do anything with his Empoleon, right? He has seven, one onto his Swampert, eight. He probably does not play more than ten. And he does not have enough energy to knock out my Zoroark. I can always Acerola, Guzma, 
There's one primary in his ability should allow him to search out another, right? Oh, whenever you attach an energy to one of your Pokemon, except with an attack or an ability. So he's going to get two Empoleon set up and we are pretty much going to be in game mode. Uh, so he's going to Guzma. He's going to bring in an Empoleon to bring in the Ninetales. And with that, I have the Guzma in hand for the game. We're going to hit him up with that well played. Uh, we can Acerola. We can Guzma. We're going to Guzma. We're going to bring in his Swampert, we're going to bring in my Zoroark, and with that it will be a 2-0 video uh, showcasing you guys that, th uh, that third place deck over at Harrogate Regionals, that Zoroark Ninetales Control. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, you guys want to see more tournament deck reviews, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and with all that being said guys, I am Johnny GB with the Token Minorities, and I am signing out.